I think this is a huge story. Uh, Sage Steele, friend of mine, you guys know that, friend of OutKick. She said in a recent interview that when she, uh, when she interviewed Joe Biden, every question was scripted, and she was not allowed to ask anything off that script at all. I want to play that audio. Do we have that audio to play for everybody? I think we do. Every single question was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate. It was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups. No follow-ups. Next. Okay, that's Fox News Digital, I believe. Uh, thanks to Haley on our team for cutting that so you could all see it. Okay, this is a big story. Uh, Y'all know, again, I like Sage. I appreciate her telling this story. What everyone who works in sports media, and honestly, even people who don't work in sports media should be asking, is not only is this true, did ESPN script every word, every question of Sage Steele's interview with Joe Biden, but did they also provide those questions in advance to the Biden White House? Now, I think this is a huge story. And some of you out there may be saying, okay, well, why do you think this is a huge story? First of all, why does Joe Biden want to go on ESPN? He wants to talk to an audience that is not there for politics that may be persuadable. That's why he's doing it. I mean, I, that's why any politician wants to go on ESPN. They want to come to a sports audience. This is why I thought it was dumb for Joe Biden not to do the Super Bowl interview. An audience that is there for sports and just be like, hey, I'm a regular guy too. I like sports. I want to talk to you directly in a forum and in a location that is less political because that's a way for me to persuade you in a way that you might not be persuaded if you watch the State of the Union or you're watching 60 Minutes or you're watching a debate, or an interview on Fox News, MSNBC, or CNN. If what Sage Steele said is true, not only did left-wingers inside of ESPN ensure that Joe Biden had a kind, gentle, and unthreatening environment for which to do an interview, I would wager they also told the White House in advance exactly what questions were coming. Because otherwise, why would you have all of those questions out there? I will tell you this right now. We have a ton of guests. I have interviewed now Donald Trump, both as president and non-president, I don't know, five or six different times. I've interviewed every one of the leading Republican candidates. I have interviewed uh, RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard when she was running for the office of president of the United States as a Democrat. At no point have I ever told them on any of the shows I've ever been on what questions were coming in advance. In fact, at no point have I ever said that to any guest that has ever appeared on any show that we air. And if anybody ever tried to dictate topics, I wouldn't do the interview. Now, it's not uncommon for somebody to say, hey, so-and-so would like to come on. They've got a book that they're promoting or they've got a movie that they're promoting. That's understood on some level. I'm not begrudging any of that. I think you understand that in the audience. Hey, so-and-so's coming on. I mean, I've done interviews all over the place. If I'm doing an interview and I got a book out, then I want to be able to talk about my book. That's why I'm coming on and giving you my time. But I've never said, and oh, I don't, I don't do public, but, oh, Clay won't even talk about this topic. I've never said it my whole life. Never would. Did ESPN pick the topics, the questions, and provide them all to Joe Biden in an effort to help his political standing? I think they probably did. Everyone should be a demanding an answer to that question right now, particularly because not only is it an unthreatening environment that is theoretically not there for politics, also, Joe Biden doesn't do that many interviews. So if ESPN is agreeing to ground rules, providing written ideas of what questions they're going to ask, not only are they failing for their audience, but they're rigging the entire game in favor of Joe Biden. Yesterday, Sage Steele said when she interviewed Joe Biden, 
she was given scripted requirements for questions, and she was not allowed to go off that script at all. I said yesterday it's a big story, and it raised two questions. One, is Sage telling the truth? And I believe that she is telling the truth because I know Sage Steele, and I think she has been very honest about her experiences at ESPN. So one, yes, I believe her. Two, did ESPN provide those questions in advance to the Biden White House before they interviewed him on ESPN? Outkick reached out to ESPN, and the network declined comment on both aspects of that story. One was Sage Steele telling the truth about having scripted questions that she was not allowed to deviate from and forced to read. And second, did they give those questions to the White House in advance? I'll give a couple of significant aspects of that, but I got an idea. If you're an actual journalist, maybe request emails and see if ESPN executives were writing to White House employees on their taxpayer-funded email addresses attaching the questions that were going to be given to Joe Biden in the event of this ESPN interview. They are so cocky, there may well be written email evidence of ESPN executives tipping off the Biden administration to exactly what questions were going to be asked and in what order, again, make those freedom of information requests, uh, file them, and see whether you can catch ESPN red-handed actually demanding the questions, uh, giving the questions to the Biden White House that they were going to ask. That would be pretty important. The fact that ESPN isn't willing to comment on this at all is not good. Because if you come to me with an accusation that is outlandish, that I know to be untrue, you know what I would do? I'd come on this show and I'd just say, hey, it's, it's a lie. It's not true. They're not doing that. They're declining comment. This is a big story. And if we actually had truth and honesty and actual big J journalists in sports media, they would be asking questions about this. And I can speak only for myself. I have interviewed Trump five or six times now couple of times on my Outkick the Coverage Sports Talk radio show. Live in person for an hour at Bedminster Golf Club. Live in person for an hour at Mar-a-Lago twice. I think I've interviewed Trump five times. Fairly substantial interviews. Three for an hour at a time. Two more uh, for for a longer period of time. Uh, than a typical radio segment, probably 25 minutes or so, on the Outkick the Coverage show. And in all of those interviews, no one at the White House ever said, hey, we're going to ask uh, X and Y. Uh, What are the questions exactly going to be? I've talked about this on the radio. Trump comes rolling in for all of our interviews that we've done in person with him on Clay and Buck, with like one person, not some huge coterie of, uh, of, of advisors, one person, I think both times, and no demands about what questions are going to be asked or what can't be asked or what should be asked. Did ESPN do this? It's a big story. Because the President of the United States getting tipped off as to what he's going to be asked and having scripted questions where your journalists are not allowed to go off the script, this is paid programming. This is propaganda, left-wing garbage hidden inside of sports programming. This is a big deal. And if we had an honest media, somebody other than OutKick would be covering it and asking the questions. But right now, nobody else is. And so we will ask these questions. Credit to Sage Steele for speaking out. um, And uh, credit to OutKick for following up. Keith Olbermann commented on Sage Steele as well. Uh, Sage Steele comes out, says, hey, there's a total rig job in effect. Um, ESPN wouldn't let me ask any questions that I wanted to. They insisted that I only ask the questions that they wanted to provide. They refused to comment. Keith Olbermann's reaction 
this morning. I saw it. Of course, all caps, it was scripted. If it hadn't have been at Sage Steel, the dumbest person I've ever worked with in sports or news couldn't have gotten through it. That is Keith Olbermann reacting to Sage Steele. Now, I know Sage, and there are dumb people in sports media. This may shock you. She is not one of them. Very smart, very capable. But the fact that Olbermann is now comfortable taking shots at Sage Steele because he disagrees with her politics is absolutely indefensible. And Keith Olbermann either needs to have less meds or more meds. Either he's not taking the medicine that his doctors are prescribing or he's taking too much. I'm not sure which. Keith Olbermann, inexcusable, indefensible. The guy is a shadow of himself. And I always think about this. Can you imagine telling yourself in the 1990s when Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann were anybody who watched sports, you thought they had the coolest jobs and they were the coolest guys on the planet? Dan Patrick's gone on to have a great career. He left ESPN. He's got one of the most successful sports talk radio shows of all time. I like Dan. I like uh, his success. Nothing negative at all to say about Dan Patrick. Keith Olbermann's lost his mind. And he's become actually everything that he claims he hates about Trump. He claims that Trump is an authoritarian dictator. He wants the Supreme Court overthrown. He claims that Trump is sexist. He's regularly went after Riley Gaines and said she sucked as a swimmer because she lost to a dude. Now he's going after uh, Sage Steele and saying she's dumb because she objected to not being able to ask her own questions as an interviewer. Um, I mean, he's just an embarrassing dude. I, I, I honestly, in many respects, feel like he needs to be either dialed down on the meds that he's on or he needs way more of them. 